Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Vand. Today we've got an absolute epic feature for you. We've got Nick's bagged wide body R32 powered caddy for you. This thing has got flames, pots, bangs and everything. Stay tuned and keep watching. <laughs> Today we've got Nick's VW Caddy, aka Y Caddy Nick. Do you want to just tell us a bit about yourself, where you're from, what you do, and the story behind this masterpiece? I'm Nick from Wakefield, steel fabricator welder, and this is my wide arch caddy van. Started life as a 2006 base caddy. Yep. Didn't even have electric windows or anything. I bought it for my business as self-employed, and yeah, it kind of went from there. I did the usual, lowered it, put some bigger alloys on it, and I went for the eight and a half inch front wheels and nine and a half rears. Basically, so I, I put the nine and a half rears on and the sliding door wouldn't open. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of, I started looking into my options with that and people were saying about spacing side rails and stuff and I thought, you know what, I just kind of fancy doing something a bit different. So I went home that night and started thinking about it and thought it'd be quite cool if I wide arched it. I went even wider and then got rid of the sliding door. So, well, aren't you? I am, yeah. yeah. So, everything's, you know, we ain't got no fiberglass. No, everything's steel, all, all done out of steel sheet. The arches are hand rolled, wow. um, did them all myself. Uh, sills, they're all 1.6 mil steel sheet that I folded and just made fit, wow. basically. And then, yeah, I went, got up morning after, went up to my unit and set about welding it all up, making it and welding it up. Where do you start with something like that? It was just trial and error to be honest. Yeah. I've never done anything like it before. Yeah, but that's your trade anyway, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah, but I've never done anything like on this on this sort of level. So I started out by making cardboard templates for everything, all the archers, and I got them to, to sit nice and you know where exactly how I wanted them. Yeah. And from there I transferred that onto the 1.6 steel sheet, drew it all out and then cut it out and then started hand rolling. Nice. So got the rough shape of everything you know how I wanted it and it was just a lot of fine tuning, trimming, sanding, yeah. getting them to the right shape and then yeah it's just a case of sticking them on and try and weld them up without everything warping. I first noticed you a number of years ago on uh, on Instagram when it was black. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, back, you know, the sort of early days of you doing it. Were it bagged then at that point? It was, yeah. It was on early 3P, but it wasn't on the same rear setup as what it is now. Originally, I modified the rear axle, the original axle, and I flipped the centre of the axle over. Yep. This is a crank in the axle, and to get it so low, that was hitting the diesel tank. So I basically flipped the axle right over as well, uh, or the centre of the axle, which got away from the diesel tank. But I was never 100% happy with it because I had no articulation. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very rigid sort of back end. I then went to this new setup, which I put the Volkswagen Turan rear chassis rails on. All right, it. okay. And it now has a full independent rear end, which is a Mark V Gold subframe. And all the suspension. All the stuff. suspension, yeah. yeah. I've had my own shop to rip up in, uh, to cut out the inner arches, make my own uh, shock absorber turrets, and wow. obviously put, put the airbags in place of the springs. 
so it has all the proper top spring locators and everything. Is that where you did all the um, struts in the back as well? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, I, I was a little bit concerned about the strength because the inner arch linings are not very thick. Yeah. Um, so I originally started by putting the, the cross brace between the two, just to try and give it a bit, a bit more support. Yeah. And then that well, I had a bit of tube left, and we'll put a bit here and a bit there, and it sort of came together as it is now. And I like it. So when I did the subframe conversion, the front of the subframe actually goes like hits the back of the tank. Yeah. I did away with the fuel tank. I looked into putting the tram tank in, put the filler next on the opposite side. Yeah. So because I'd already done, you know, basically all the body work, I didn't then want to start cutting into the side of the van again and putting a new filler cap on the other side. So I looked at, looked at other other options and my best option was to put a, a race cell in the back. Nice. So that's that's how that came about. And obviously I, I put, made my own filler neck and um, did all that so I have to fill it up from inside the back now. <laughs> Which is fun at petrol station. Yeah. Oh, I but get, it is. get them running out now and then. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Just filling my van up. <laughs> Once I got all the, all the archers on, I made it look obviously quite a lot more aggressive. Yeah. It was just missing something. something. It just, it just, the rest of the van didn't suit like the, you know, the top half didn't suit the bottom. Yeah. It was just too smooth. So then it came into my head that why not make a big wing for it? I've never seen it done before. No, no. So I designed, I designed the brackets myself. I made a cardboard template then profiled them out um, and then the actual wing itself is made from aluminium sheet so I cut the cut the shape out and then just put it through through rollers and just just to get the curve of it and it actually came together pretty well really I was I was happy with it I used to have uh, a BMW F22 M Sport front bumper on it right. and uh, my own back bumper with a big with a big diffuser in it yeah. And it just, it was just a bit too max power. It was never finished anyway, but it just, it didn't really, I don't know, it just didn't look quite right. I wasn't 100% happy. So I backed at drawing board again, and then I decided to facelift it, reshaped all the arches, made them a bit more sweeping into into the side of the van, yeah. which made, you know, that made, that made it look 100 times better. I was a lot happier then. And, went back to the standard rear bumper. To be honest, I think it's transformed van. I, I was a lot happier. I stood, you know, you stand back after and you yeah. just think, yeah, I'm happy with that yeah. now. Everything's been fabricated by yourself. It has. Obviously, you've done all the suspension. Yeah. Yeah. You've done all the mechanical work. Yeah. And right. all the paintwork. I kind of just fancied more of a, a race theme. So then I started looking into you know race liveries and one thing or another. I've seen an image on your social media of when you had it in your head, put the pen to paper, and then it done. Yeah, that's right. I, I had a couple to be honest. I did do a few hand sketches. Yeah. Of, of, and some designs of what I wanted, and then once I sort of finalised my idea, I then used an app on my phone to to create the Finished delivery of, yeah. over yeah. over the original van yeah. over my van so yeah I did I did do all that um, and then once I saw that I was like yeah that's how it's going to be that's, that's the way it's going then it was straight into the paint shop and I set about sanding it all back prepping it all and I painted everything it only took just over a week to, wow. to, paint, to paint it all What 
sort of inspired you to to think, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take take PD one thirty out and put put an R thirty two in. To be honest with you, I got bored. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, mainly mainly that, and it was just missing something. The van isn't really designed for speed and, and power, so it's so low it, it just catches on everything. And <laughs> it was purely for the sound. Yeah. And what better engine is there to set the, than an R32 for know. the sound? So throaty. Yeah. yeah. It's actually out of an A, Audi A3, but it's the later, it's a Mark V yeah. Golf R32 engine. Uh, so it's running the six speed manual box out of the Audi, drive shafts, everything everything from firewall forward basically. Is it literally take your PD130 out? So the engine mounts are uh, the original ones off the Audi, yep. um, but they are, they're exactly the same fixing points as the standard BLS or the PD130. Yep. So it is literally a direct fit. I use the drive shafts out of the Audi. And are they the same length? They're not, no. This has actually does have the transfer box on, because down the line I'm planning on making it four wheel drive. Ah, really? Now I've, got, ah, right. now I've got the rear subframe in, it's just literally a case of getting a four wheel drive subframe. It went over to Andy over Boost. It did, yeah. Who yeah, did I booked over... him with Andy and he, I, I trailered it to him, dropped it off and there you go. There you go. I so, when it's done. So he, he, he worked his magic and got all the, you know, the ECU done and yeah. married to, to Obviously to the uh, carrier. Correct, yeah, it's, it's, it's running the Audi 3.2 ECU, yeah. so yeah, that's all wired up now. Is uh, it just to change your clocks? I, I didn't have to, mm -hmm. but I have done because obviously before it was a diesel uh, rev counter. Yeah. So I've now put in Volkswagen to run 1.6 FSI clocks, I think they are. Yeah. So I took it to West Yorkshire Tuning for the pop and bangs and all flames and everything and Marinda over there was brilliant we didn't think it was actually going to go on the dyno with it being so low even <laughs> when it's even when it's fully fully aired up it's I can see he's got a ramp up to his own he has yeah we got the dyno and then when the when he started pulling the file off to obviously remap it he just kept kicking him straight out and saying that the ECU were locked basically so the the engine originally the ECU had actually had a previous tune on right. and been locked, so it was a bit gutting, a bit of a bit of a disappointing afternoon. But back off dyno it came, I took it back home, and then I think it was the following night I took the ECU down to Chris Bellman at Sheffield. At yeah, Sheffield, yeah. yeah, it was brilliant. I took it straight down there the same night. He unlocked it, put a factory flash on for me and back to stock. So I got straight booked straight back in over at West Yorkshire tuning again. And second time lucky we got down there, got the dyno, uh, got, got the file pulled off, during the remapped it and uh, yeah, did a did a couple of runs with it and I pops, bangs, flames. Absolutely have a moon with it, yeah, it was buying some right flames. <laughs> Certainly pretty loud and in your face now. Yeah, it is. Well, it's, it's, it is loud and in your face. Well, that's that's the whole idea. That's the route I wanted to go, really. Yeah. Just suits the, the full image of the van now. So I'm, I'm pretty happy to be honest. So what intake you got on here? It's it's one I've made myself. All right. Okay. It's, it's an aluminium. I think it's about 80 mil diameter. It's, it's same as standard uh, factory diameter intake. Uh, it's just a it's just a short intake with a, with a cone filter on. All right, okay. Um, I had to make my own MAF sensor housing and everything, so I did all that. Yeah. Tig welded it all up, and I've, I've just painted it gloss black. And um, what exhaust have you got? Well, the exhaust is it's a D cap. It's, it's a twin down pipes, then a 
two to one centre pipe. I do actually now have a small silencer in. It's five inch by about 14 inch. That's in now? Long. That's in now, Are you yeah. Sure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think it, I don't think it does a right lot. <laughs> Yeah, and then just straight, straight out the back to me, to my wire piece, yeah. two tailpipes. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty direct route, which I think helps throw out flames and pop some bangs. Do you just want to go into a bit more detail about your brake suspension and wheels. So the brake setup I've got on now is Audi S3. I think it's 345 mil fronts, 310 mil rear discs. Right. Okay. And I've got hell braided brake lines as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've done, oh. done all that in yellow as well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Massive improvement. It's really, I'm, I'm happy I've done that. The wheels are actually the Autostar Monzas, the 19 inch PT45, if I remember right. The 8.5 inch fronts and 9.5 inch rears. Right. But obviously, with it being so wide, I have actually, I am running 40mm spaces up front and 60mm spaces at the rear. So the suspension is Airlift 3P. Yep. I've got performance front struts, so the fully adjustable top mounts and the Airlift rear bags, which are for the Mark 5 Golf. My turn! <laughs> Tell you what, I love this shifter. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. I, I like it. This sort of brings everything. I don't know, maybe a bit closer to the steering wheel, that's yeah. all. You all feel a bit, a bit more racy, maybe. Oh, yes. It's a bit, a bit of beats. <laughs> seats in there. Yeah. Um, the steering wheel I got from America. Right, okay. Uh, from a company called Volante USA. I got that shipped over and then I've got a, 
an NRG quick release boss and a slimline hubbard actor boss, you know, steering boss. Yep. And I just try and keep everything as compact as I could. And then I've got a bright gear stick and I've actually got the short shift kit in there. So I've got the Turan dash, door cards, um, centre console, I've got a, the roof lining I made myself and I've put the six spotlights in there. Fully carpeted it all out myself. The door speakers and stuff are still standard but I've have the hurt have subwoofer in there. Yep. And the upgraded head unit with the big screen. And all your tank so, and compressor. Yeah, all, all, all the air stuff in there, tank, yeah. So that's all mounted to the harness bar. I've got OMP 4 point harnesses. Yes. Um, I like yeah. them. I like them. Alright, so you try and uh, lift the suspension <laughs> up or something, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Can't reach. Guys, it, it, it is a comfortable van. It's the first van I've been in that's been on air, and as harnesses, and yeah. it is a comfortable ride. Yeah, the, the rear subframe made a huge difference. I, mean, I, I, I recommend that modification definitely to anyone who's, who's thinking of a, you know, either a fast road caddy or yeah. anything performance wise. It's literally just handled like Transform. a car now, 100%, yeah. So Nick, what have you got planned next? <laughs> <laughs> um, Probably, like I say, just the, just a four wheel drive conversion, I think. Yeah. Um, I do have the odd thoughts of maybe going down the route of a supercharger or a turbo, but again, I don't know. Like I say, I am chasing power with it. I mean, it is where it is. It's, it's just fun to drive. It just makes a lot of noise and flames, so I, I'm happy with that. I know you take it to a lot of shows. I do, yeah, I try Obviously, to. Yeah. This year, nobody's had any chance of going to any shows, but. You know, no doubt people at home will see it at a show next yeah. year. Yeah, hopefully. So is there anybody you want to give a shout out to who's up through the build? Yeah, there's, there's Andy at Overboost. Um, he's been absolutely brilliant. He's always there. If I ever get stuck, just give him a ring. He's, he's always there to help out. Chris Bellman, obviously for the unlocking the ECU and working his magic on that. Yeah. West Yorkshire tuning yeah. for mapping van and, and sorting that out when we had the problems. Unit 14C, which is a good friend of mine, Oliver. He's, he's been great, he's held me out, giving me use of his ramp and, and any little bits and pieces that I've needed to do with. Yeah, just, and, and generally everyone, I mean, my other half, she's pretty good. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, the amount of nights that I'll, uh, I'll get home from work, nip in for my tea, just a quick hello, and then back out, and she's fast asleep by the time I've finished buggering about with this, so yeah. She's been brilliant. Just so people at home can give you a follow on Instagram, what's your username? My Instagram is wide underscore caddy underscore nick. Yep. And TikTok, same as my Instagram. Have got TikTok? I have, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What a machine. I we've got R32 power, wide body, on air. What more do you want? It's an absolute pleasure to drive. That noise. That noise. It's here, isn't it? Yeah. I'll get them in here. That there? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, man. So much fun. Right guys, I think we'll call it a day. Thanks for coming down and seeing us, Nick. No problem, thank you. You've got an absolute me. monster. And I've got no doubt we'll see more in you in the future. Definitely, yeah. So don't forget, give us a like and a subscribe. Keep a look out for any more videos we're going to be doing. And have a look at the videos we've already done. And uh, we wish you all a very Merry Christmas. And a happy new year and we'll see you soon thanks a lot nick thank you all right see you later guys see ya.